uh, long story short, you know, what is what is something that I you, you recently pay pay a lot of attention to is the volume weighted average prices. Right. So if we apply a very simple uh, metric that is anchored view up, and if you anchor that at the well, let's say the most recent uh, leg up, which was pretty much like leading, leading Bitcoin all the way from well our peanut of hope, if you will, uh, something that you and I were bringing on the we show. We created that. We created that. We we, yeah, we did that. We were talking about it, right? And I was I was I was discussing back then, you know, how this potential tiny, tiny, you know, just think this tiny peanut, peanut of hope could actually evolve into something big, which it eventually did. And the reason for that was, you know, that the bears got over complacent. There was like a peak of you of, of bearish euphoria, right? Which is, as a matter of fact, peak of, of fear. And right now we are somewhat seeing some, some similar changes to that, right? But if you anchor that at the same time, like, as I said, at the, at the final kind of like leg up, which led to the massive breakout, well, it means that this entire move up was technically very significant and important, right? Because this was like different than the previous failed rallies. And mm -hmm. uh, like if you analyze that as well and account the, let's say, all time highs anchored, you know, measured uh, like a view up. And it tells you that the average fair price of Bitcoin decided and gauged like gauging by the volume is 42.2, 42, exactly 234, right? Which is right now Bitcoin approaching at this very moment. The final, the, the fair price decided, you know, upon the volume of this leg up, okay, was, uh, well, 43,766. As long as the price of Bitcoin is below its averages, below its fair prices decided by, by the some metrics, by volume or by the overall, you know, price history, if we, if we don't account the volume itself, then it it's it is something that signal to you that, okay, the market prices Bitcoin too low versus its fair price, right? Based on volume. So the information that it tells you is that it's pretty much just a good buying opportunity. And the Fedder deviates, the Fedder deviates, you know, just below its averages like it, it did in here, like it did in here, like it did with the peanut of hope of the 21st of July, right? Which was, which we signaled the bottom for. Or assuming there is no like military conflicts, you know, just an emergency or something like if the, if the overall external factors of the economics are not changed, now, too much, then we could anticipate that Bitcoin has just reverted to its mean value, to its fair value. And as long as it gets around these values after, well, somewhat of 25% decline, well, this is more, far more better buying opportunity than selling opportunity for short term, if you ask me, right? Because we have just made kind of like this full circle, this 180 degree pivot, where we actually came back to the levels on the from the breakout days from the August, from early August. And what about, yeah, what it tells me is that Bitcoin's just come back to its, to its fair prices, and that that's the metric that I guess. Like, but what about stock markets? I mean, the stock market is not looking good. If yes and no, just to be honest, because the instability that you see on the market is definitely not something that would stop Fed from printing more money, right? And you know, there is like something that um that is very significant because first of all, I'm not sure like many people remember, but last year in you know February, I was talking about how. I disliked, you know, this this bearish divergence between the between the Dow, Dow Jones Industrials and Dow Jones Transportational Average, which eventually led to to the COVID crash, right? And I was warning about the crash coming about two three weeks before it actually happened. And this is actually something that people can scroll, you know, from my feed in, and then they'll they'll find a tweet about it. And uh, you know, there is some pattern. There is some similar pattern, right? Where these two averages kind of like dissect. They, they follow different angles. They follow different directions, as a matter of fact. The Dow Jones Industrials make, you know, as the overall industrial stock companies make new highs, make new lows, uh, which are higher than the prior prior ones. While this is actually, you know, diverging in the opposite direction. So which tells me disrupts the foundational kind of like a you know, principle of, of the, well, Dove theory, if you will, that the averages do not confirm each other, right? So it tells me about the overall short-term instability of the market as a whole, right? And on top of that, you have a lot of FUD coming from Evergrande, of course, from China, right? There's like not, not a single, you know, 
point of doubt that the entire world is right now in this overall financial crisis, which is just, you know, pretty much just keeping us blind in a way, you know, under like not really revealing all the truth because the charts are looking fine, right? So how can we be in a recession? Like if the charts are going up, of course, and this is actually the case, like this entire inflationary bubble that the global government, central banks got ourselves in is a one-way ticket. And in my opinion, it is going to lead to brand new um, kind of like a crash, probably the same or not even worse, if not even worse than Great Depression of 1929. Uh, well, this is going to literally blow up this entire financial system as we know. There's not going to be like printed currencies anymore. You don't think that's happening right now? No, 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 that's not happening right now. So this, like this divergence on the contrary to the current ones, you know, this take, take, took years, right? The market was kind of like substantially, you know, getting too much heat uh, from the printers uh, like over, over years. Right now we are talking about like, what, two, three months period. So I read it more as a short-term warning, right? Even if you watch, of course, that as, you know, the S&P 500 was done and poor. This is some old, old chart, but, you know, if you even if you apply a very simple metric, I don't know, like moving average, like 200 day moving average, right? Let's just play it or 200 week moving average. Uh, like what it what is just telling you is, again, any time that the market was pretty much like, you know, just going down, you know, it was very fast, but up, right? The overall tendency mm -hmm. is upwards. And like right now, it seems and appears to me that the Feds and overall global central banking policy is that when the markets you know just go down just print more money right and and it would just go back again so there is a saying this popular saying that that claims you know do not fight the fed do not fight the tape do not fight the trend and if i were here i would not really try to catch the bottom because there were many people in the past decades trying to catch the bottom and fed you know kept everybody surprised each and every single time printing more money and just buying back the entire stock market. So I assume the same would happen again.